management. Um, permit me to invite uh, my, my colleagues to cue the introduction um, for Professor Chibike Uche, uh, who would make the last paper presentation, and then we go into the panel discussion. Um, and we see that the questions are coming in. Please keep them coming, and we'll pose these questions to the panelists when we get to that section. The introduction, please. Introducing Professor Chibuke Uche. Professor Chibuke Uche is the chairholder of the Stephen Ellis Chair for the Governance of Finance and Integrity in Africa at the leading university, Netherlands. Chibuke Uche has extensive research experience in Nigeria, Ghana, and Sierra Leone in the fields of political economy, business and financial history, financial institutions regulation, and regional integration. His current research interest is foreign business operations in Africa. Prior to joining the ASCL, he was Professor of Banking and Financial Institutions at the University of Nigeria and a member of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He has a PhD in Accounting and Finance from the London School of Economics. His thesis, entitled Banking Developments in Pre-Independence Nigeria, a study in regulation control and politics was awarded the International Economic History Association Prize for the best doctoral thesis completed between 1997 and 2000 for the post-World War I period. In addition to his academic qualifications, he is also a chartered accountant. He trained at Coopers and Linbrand, now PricewaterhouseCoopers in Nigeria. Uchi was a Carlo and Irene Berner Scholar 1993 to 1994 a Commonwealth Scholar 1995 to 1997, a World Bank Robert S. McNamara Fellow 1999, an Association of Commonwealth Universities UK titular, Worshipful Company of Chartered Accountants, Fellow 2001, a Leventis Visiting Scholar at the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London 2000, an Academic Visitor in the Departments of Accounting and Finance and Economic History at the London School of Economics 2000 to 2001, a Visiting Fellow of the African Studies Center in Leading 2004 and 2010, a Visiting Professor at the IILM Institute for Higher Education, India, September 2008, an Alexander von Humboldt George Foster Fellow for experienced researchers and a guest professor at Humboldt University, Berlin, 2008 to 2009, a visiting scholar, discipline of accounting at the University of Sydney, October 2009, and an Alexander von Humboldt Return Fellow, 2010 to 2011, and a guest researcher at the Nordic Africa Institute, Uppsala, Sweden, 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Chibuke Uche. Please, are you hearing me, please? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, great. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for this opportunity to come and address this August occasion. Uh, I am not an alumnus of uh, CIC, but I am an as I'm associated with the school. My late brother, OGB, was a, an old boy. Uh, my cousins, Obina, Jack Billion, Tobina Ikena also went to CIC. So I'm proud. I'm a proud, I'm proudly associated with this great school. I understand this is your 80 years, uh, this year is your 80 years. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, I hear great things from my cousins, what you guys have been doing and listening to Charles, who do Charles. Uh, I also, uh, I hear great things about what you guys have been doing and I have the privilege of knowing Charles. The last time I saw Charles was in kind of way he bailed me out when I lost all my money. <laughs> I hope Charles, you still remember. And, uh, so thank you again for that day. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's, that's really this. So I've listened greatly and I've also listened to these models. Today is a model, the CIC model, uh, Government College Umwaha model. Uh, it's quite exciting. I never knew these kinds of things were happening at this level. I mean, I, did, I went to Federal Government College in So when I heard the last speaker speaking, I was saying, okay, what model should I talk about today? I was just wondering, uh, what's the FGC model? But unfortunately, <laughs> we are not as lucky as you guys, so we have no model to talk about. So, but having said that, I think what I will do today essentially, uh, 
is to look at education generally in Nigeria. And I think, sorry, can I can you go to the next slide? I, I don't have control. Yeah. And essentially, so what I will do today is to look at education generally in Nigeria. And I think this is an area I have some competence. Uh, and I will essentially argue two major things that whatever we do, that the foundation is key and that is what is looking. And then the second thing I will also argue is that ethics, no matter how you look at this model, that ethics is very important. It is not just what we do also, but how do we do this? And it's not what we say, but what we do, how what it teaches others about dynamics of education. And I think that is very important for us to look at in what we do. Okay, so uh, can, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, for my lecture today, I will look at uh, three, uh, about four major things. I'll look at what are, what are the objectives of good education. Uh, and then I will essentially, we will now look at uh, the pyramids of numbers. And I will argue that we should always see education as a pyramid. And that should also determine our pyramid of attention. And I will also look at the ethics and education. And I also will look at, uh, then I'll ask some random questions about education and then we'll, I'll conclude. And I'm told that I should do this in uh, judge, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Nanda told me I should do this in 20 minutes. And uh, so I'll try and keep to the time. Can we have the next slide, please? So in my view, what are the objectives of good education? I think the first important thing is to look at it, it must be inclusive. And what I mean by this, everybody should have this opportunity to go to school. Okay, so uh, the models are good and they are great things, but we should always have a bigger picture. There are micro models. And what moves the needle is not the micro, it's the macro. So I think we should have that kind of thing. So when we see opportunities, we should approach it from that. So it should be inclusive and there should be opportunity for everybody. It's not just saying it's universal free education, but how then do we implement it to make it inclusive? And that brings me to the second point there should be uniform standards. And this is so important because if you, even if you look at primary school, which is the basic school, and which well, that's what I will argue in my next session. If you look, if it's just, if you standardize primary school across the country, it changes everything, right? That simply means if you if you have a flat tire in uh, Arundi Zogo, if you have a flat tire in Okigwe, the organizer will understand the science of uh, fixing, pumping your tire. And that is so key. So if you pump your tires across and you go, you go and stand there, check uh, the pressure in your tire. Three, four different places will give you three different readings. And that in my view is the foundation, shows very poor foundation of education. People really don't know what they're doing, what are the standards. But if you standardize education, it changes everything for everybody. And I have friends all over, right? And all they tell me, what are you really doing? Oh, I'm working very hard to, give my children good education. But this is where it starts. So if you standardize education, for example, I come from Aaron Dizog, and the village school is standardized. I will have no business living Aaron I will have a better life in Aaron Dizog. I still be teaching in, say, Enugu with good transport. And that changes a lot of things if you can standardize it because the rush to concentration in city halls has to do with poor education. And that makes a lot of difference. Your life, you have a poor life in terms of environment okay, and in terms of uh, quality of life, while you could have, can actually have a better life if you just focus on just basic education. So if you standardize the education, in my view, a lot will uh, actually change. And the, another thing we should also look at is uh, the educational system should produce conceptual and contextual thinkers. And I've heard, I was listening to Charles talking about, okay, where we can learn from. And I think also, I must give it to him also. He talked about, yes, people who can come and solve problems. And I think that is key because if you look at uh, the system, what does it produce really? And you don't have to go far. I mean, I, I give one regular example. I give, I got to know about this kind of structure when I was in secondary school and I had a very good friend then in just in, when we were in secondary school, who was a conceptual and contextual thinker. I don't know uh, what he's doing now, but I know his name was uh, Amechindili. And what one, I know one thing he used to tell me those days when we used to talk about Lagos, okay? And 
I could understand it. He said, look, why is there so much traffic in Lagos? I didn't understand it. He said, look, it's simple. Because the city center is not in the center of the city. And to me, this made so much sense. But you could see somebody who understood something conceptually. And okay, so, and if you look at Lagos, for instance, a lot of my friends used to, I used to, I asked them, how do we solve this transport problem in Lagos? He said, it's simple. You don't, if you look at the context of the society, of the environment, should determine your transport mode. That marine transport is the only thing that can actually effectively address Lagos transport. And that was what they can do. It's not my original idea. It come from an, you're one of my senior friends I have great respect for. But these are the kinds of thinking that our educational system should actually promote. Because the problem we have with copying is that, as one of our former PhD students at Leiden University used to say, the problem with copying, when you copy from Europe, you cannot paste in Africa. There are different contexts. So we need to get a system that understands the context and deals with the dynamics of the context and changes the context. And that, in my view, is what is good education. And then the whole essence of this is to have improved social cohesion. Because if you go, I mean, I come from a place, if you go to a village meeting, my village town union meeting, and you see people at different educational strands, there's no cohesion. Clearly, there's no common foundation. And if you have a common foundation, systems will become easier to manage and manipulate. And if you don't have that, then we have a problem. Please, the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we now look at pyramids. Essentially, the main point I'm making is that, look, education is a pyramid. So the focus, in my view, should be on the, if you look at most people get into the primary school, and that is the base of the pyramid, and then you go up to the university, right? That is the simple structure. And my argument today would be that if you look at for attention to education and to make this pyramid make sense, the attention to education must be also pyramidal in structure. So that means most of the focus must go to the foundation, primary school. But apparently that is not what we have is a kind of inverse pyramid. Because in Africa, uh, the more you shout, the more you get, all you hear, as is going on strike and they give them more money. But in terms of primary school, there is very basic. I mean, I went to WTC primary school in Enugu and I go there today, I, it's really appalling. The one, the same, in fact, the smaller space has now been converted to about six schools, no improved infrastructure. Okay, and that's that. They, I look at my uh, village school, uh, government teachers in Imo I mean, they have about three teachers. So clearly, there's no foundation, there's no focus on that foundation. And this is the foundation that creates whatever we build on top. So when Charles Wobble talks about a poor education, uh, graduate without focus, graduate without knowledge, it doesn't start at the, it doesn't start at the university. It starts actually at the foundation. Okay, so and I think that is key in my view uh, for us to understand how. So we must change the pyramid of attention. We must reverse that pyramid, and that is key. Okay, so uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so, but this is now where I come to all these models. I like and I'll, and I'll address it a bit. And again. Uh, we are talking in terms of context and conceptual thinking, original, and just talking out of the box. I don't know much about this model, but uh, in terms of ethics, there are clear things, uh, expo, uh, corruption, cultism. Most of the CIC people I'm sure grew up in, uh, went to Nigeria, and few people will disagree with me that these are the dominant features of our educational uh, system in the secondary school and in the university, for instance. I, mean, I was, 15 years ago, I was the Dean of Business Administration in UNN, and I, I worked, we tried to change the system. And it's it's a story for another day, but essentially today, I'll just share some personal experiences. I wish I had more time, but it doesn't. Uh, but what my general argument is that ethics is central, but when you institutionalize fraud as part of a system, right? And, I hear today and I, I speak to younger people who go on youth service and uh, one in Kirby State, one in River State, and it is institutionalized to the extent that during YEC examination, senior certificate examination, the students are asked, the youth couples are asked to write the answers for the students on the board during the exams. Okay, so no matter what, how you paper, no matter how you paint it, there's no, there's no paths ahead. No matter the model you use, if you don't fix this basic problem, which is central, the needle cannot shift. 
can only go backwards, in my view, for instance. But then we now come to the ethics of alumni support, and that is important. And this is an area, and again, I will uh, share some experiences. Uh, a friend took me to an alumni event once, and what did we see? Okay, I mean, very successful people like people who went to CIC, uh, Farah Government College, Government College, Umar, yeah. but, and then they were donating money in dollars. But what we noticed that there were the students were hanging around the windows, listening to these donations. And when people were leaving, they would be singing to them and they would be giving them money with their mobile policemen. And I told my father, this is the worst kind of, in trying to develop the university, you are destroying the very ethics you are trying to build. If students are punched to praise singers and beggars in their school, then what the alumni, what are they doing? I'm not saying this is, of course, what happens in CIC or what happens in Fisher, Government College in Moya, but I'm saying that these are some trappings. Even when we help, we must understand that we must help in the context that makes sense for eco educational groups and for societal cohesion. If we help in ways that do not do this, then that's a problem. And I will let me give you one little example. I was, uh, when I was in my graduate school at the London School of Economics, I lived in a house, in a hostel, about 400 room, room hostel. And in front of the hostel, there was a plaque. And it said, this hostel was built from funds donated by an anonymous benefactor. And I remember my very good friend, Nam Dianama, then this was several years ago. He came to visit me. He was transiting and he came to visit me. So as we were, he was stayed with me a couple of days. I, as we were going into the hostel, jokingly I showed him the plaque and he, well, he was shell shocked. And he, after about 20 minutes, we kept his box and he told to me, so gosh. I said, yes. So, but you know, it's that it's me that gave the money. I said, of course, that I know it is true. That's why he made it anonymous. But this was a joke. But the lesson of this, what I did not realize, and this can also help us in the way we do things. I told this story to a German friend of mine then, and he told me that I should not be fooled that there's nothing like anonymous giving. I should never be fooled that there's nothing like anonymous giving. Okay, that the key is this, that when people give, those who should know, know. And when it comes to rewarding them through knighthoods, they're also rewarded. And I think that is key. But when we do things, maybe we can do things in ways that also encourages societal development rather than um, ways that, that, that personal aggrandizement because the recognition always comes. Maybe these are also some of the things that shape societal values that we should also be looking at uh, when we look at them. Then what of, so when, we're giving our personal funds. I mean, this is great. I mean, uh, what government college Umar here that are doing great things. That is raising two billion. That's a lot of money, and, and we must commend them, right? And that is good. And of course, in CIC, of course, it's also good. But then we also look at institutional funds. How is this managed? And this is also part of this whole network. And we also participated in it. And I'll give you some examples. Okay, personal uh, experience. I used to be on the monetary policy committee of the central bank. And I know that Central Bank occasionally will say with well, these the great, great centers of uh, excellence and pump billions of naira into it or for secondary schools. And I know, for instance, it's networks. It, okay, I went to X school, I can get it for my school, right? And you do this and it's great. And if you get it, you get it for, it's great. But then the question, what does it teach the students who are trying to help? It, what it tells them is that when you're in government position, you should abuse it for the interest of your old boy. And I think that is where education begins to go wrong. So when people do this, then it becomes a major problem in the way we should look at things. Okay, so I think these are, there are good things, I mean, that we see. I mean, I gave it a central bank example, both at the secondary school level and at the university level. And I also can give you, when I was in ICANN, I'm very active in the ICANN network such a technical committee when we are told to get a, a professorial i was willing to fund a professorial chain in accounting in one university i was involved in the, the committee that made the choice the university we had to choose one university my senior fed colleague and friend professor Wolado, we was chair of that subcommittee and two of us were the leading voices in the committee so it came down to a battle between university of lagos and unn 
And so before we came for the meeting, as we came for the meeting, Professor Dejo said, so watch this. There's no need to fight. Let's share the money. 3.5, 3.5 million. And I jumped at it. It went to the council of ICANN, who took it through the main committee, went to the council. Okay. And, and, and essentially, uh, and that, that, that changed every that 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 changed every, that that changed everything. But at the council, of course, the, then our senior professor Alao Anao was vice chancellor in Benin, and he said no, he needed the whole seven million, and they changed it and they gave seven million to Benin, seven million to Unilag. We didn't get the summary was that when U.S. Mwanko became president, then he was second deputy president. He called me and said, oh, how do we do it? I said, there's no way you can get this. The two chairs that have been established were not working. The only way you can go and get it, go to UN and announce that, announce that I can give a professorial chair. That's the only way you can ask to do it. Okay. When I reflect on that, for instance, I know that that procedure, the whole procedure was wrong. Okay. But again, this is the whole essence of this kind of thing. Okay. So that when we do things, how, do, how should we do it? There are various better ways of doing it. Now, when it comes to CIC, for instance, one of the questions CIC should answer, again, I don't know much about CIC. I know that from 1999 to 2015, CIC, a CIC old boy was in charge of Enugu State. Did this impact on the development of your school? And was this replicated in other schools like Okonano, uh, Owa in secondary school? This is a question. If, for instance, the good labs you people built, was it repli if it was not replicated, then I guess that it's this kinds of thing which, then what does it teach us? Again, I'm not saying that is what happened. I don't have the information. But the essence of this is to what kind of education, even when we help, how should we help? And my argument today is that the ethics, the mechanism of the help is so important and so central to what we do. And we should always look at the macro impact in what we do. Micro is important because it helps, especially when, Please, next time, please. Okay, uh, okay, now some random questions. Okay, some random questions. One of the things, uh, the, the, can the diaspora help? My answer is they can bring in money, but I think from experience, I don't think the diaspora can help, but I will have, uh, maybe we don't have the time to get into this. Uh, the diaspora, of course, uh, is part of the problem. Uh, we've seen them come back. And we've seen how they've managed the system. We also know that the diaspora have dual loyalty. We also know that they have dual financial responsibilities. I am in the diaspora, so I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure that this changing hope on the diaspora in the macro can go a long way. Okay, charity. I've heard one. Of, I heard one of the ministers say charity begins at home. And, uh, yeah, charity can begin at home. Of course, if if you are doing what uh, home work here is doing, for instance, and it, you are contributing your money, then charity can begin in no more. Or well, you cannot be a minister and then be allocating federal funds to your village and say that charity begins at home. That is not charity beginning at home. That is five, abuse. Five, five more minutes, sir. Five more minutes. I wouldn't take five minutes. OK. Uh, then private solutions to public problems. Are we, setting, are we sending, children, sending children abroad? Does that help? I mean, I have lived abroad now for eight years, and I can tell you with my wife, myself, and our children, it's such a difficult task bringing children up in this kind of environment. Sometimes I wonder when parents send children abroad to without parental support, how it will be. Things can easily go wrong. And my advice is that I think we should fix our home, and I think that is the uh, key area. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay, so essentially, uh, in terms of conclusion, let me, before I conclude, let me uh, thank uh, Mekosan for asking me to come and make this presentation. Uh, and, uh, and I got, when I was speaking, I also got that, uh, had that, uh, the, the, one of the studies that some, somebody from the Ministry of Education is also on board. And I think also when we look at this macro issues, I think the problem is also the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Education, right? And, and I say this because I know that when after I became dean in Suga, I've been in a running battle with the Ministry of Education. And I can tell you that maybe that is one of the most corrupt ministries in the history of our country. Okay, and, and I would like uh, if the, minister, the representative of the Ministry of Education can send me his email, 
I will let me know. I will send you documents on this so that maybe we can start to shift the needle from here. Okay, so that's that's important. Then, secondly, I think uh, in conclusion, the foundation is so important. If we forget, if we don't focus on the primary, the basic, then we can't go far. Then, secondly, ethics is also so important. It's not just what we do, but also how we do it. What message does this send when we do this? I've been in a position and I've seen abuse of office and abuse of privilege. Okay, and I, and I do ethics as a subject of academic study. So I understand this fairly well. And I think that once we do this in this kind of dynamic, then maybe they will lay the foundation for progress in education. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Uche, uh, for that presentation. Um, there's just a whole lot to unpack in all of the presentations we've, uh, we've received today. And um, let's attempt to unpack some of them. Um, again, I'm very grateful to Dr. Enalama uh, 